اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و حبیبنا حبیب اله العالمین محمد و علی آله الطیبین الطاهرین المعصومین المنتجبین After asking for that consummating ni'mah, the ni'mah which puts all other ni'mahs, which gives all other ni'mahs meaning, Imam starts to ask about otherworldly things. Because if we have that consummating ni'mah, which is the guidance and wilaya, by wilaya I mean that Allah takes the reign of our affairs, that's wilaya. And that wilayatullah, of course, somehow comes down to Walayatul Anbiya, Walayatul A'imma alayhi salam. If that is given, then everything given to you is good. If that is not given, then things given to you may work in your benefit, may work against you. We don't know. The, all these bounties and names Allah gives to the people who work against God, it works against them. It's not good for them. They are given eyes. But they are being questioned, they are going to be questioned for it on the day of judgment for all the crimes they committed with it. They are given hands, power, wealth, all, all these things are going to be questioned about it. And it works against them. But if we have that consummating ni'mah, then of course we should ask everything from God. Everything for dunya, everything for akhirah. Now let's see what Imam asks. For dunya, Allahumma a'atani as-sa'ata fil-rizq. Give me abundance in sustenance. I want to be wealthy. Now, you may be quite surprised. Imam is asking about wealth, about abundance. Why is he thinking about these things? Well, as I said, it's not good if it comes into the heart, if it drones you. But if it's outside, it's a support. It's by that wealth that you can build a good family, build a good society, create science, knowledge, and all these things by that wealth, isn't it? Now, individually, socially, however, one thing, we have to be satisfied and happy with whatever Allah has given us, whether poverty or wealth. If we have that consummating ni'mah, everything is good for us. Now, let me... Uh, mention an anecdote here. You know, Imam Jafar Asada, at the end, when he was poisoned, he started to lose weight dramatically. And one of his companions, for the Ibn Yasar, says, I went to visit him. And I saw that he was nothing but his head. All the body was absolutely gone because of the effect of the poison. And as soon as I saw him, this was just a few days before Imam Ali Salam passed away. As soon as I saw him, I started to cry. Imam said, Ya Fudail, why do you cry? He said, because of the situation in which I am seeing you. Imam said, do not know Fudail that whatever happens to Mu'min is good for him. Whatever happens to Mu'min. Inna al-Mu'min لو أصبح وله ما بين المشرق والمغرب فهو خير له. A مؤمن if he has the wealth of the whole world, what is between east and west is good for him. If he provided their مؤمن, but for a kafir is not good because they use it to kill others, to exploit others. That's not good for them. For a مؤمن is good. وإن المؤمن لو أصبح and if it happens to Mu'min that he is cut into pieces, it's good for him. Because it's that consummating ni'mah that puts all these. So yes, of course, Imam asks, Allahumma a'atani sa'ata farras, give me abundance. Poverty is not a merit. And wealth is not a merit. Neither poverty is a merit nor wealth is a merit. But wealth brings comfort. That's good, we ask for it. But if it's not destined for us, we, do, we don't somehow destroy ourselves. We do not go angry, we do not complain. 
we should have patience, we should have rida and satisfaction, qina'a, contentment, all these are good in place because it's Allah who's at the helm and decides who should have what due to all the complications of this world. Do you know how complicated is this human relationship? Now, anyhow, we don't want to go into that. There has been some notions that dunya absolutely is not good. If you want to go to if you want to go close to God, you have to abandon dunya completely. That means you have to, you have to abandon wealth, power, everything to kuffar, and you go and live in caves or monasteries or something like that. There's a wrong notion. Those people who have these notions, they have they do have it with good intention because they want to get close to God but they are misguided as Allah mentions in Surah Al-Hadith about Christian monks Christian monks I mean you cannot blame them in the past or in the present they are actually dedicating whatever they have they did dedicate whatever they had for God they abandoned the world, they did not marry, they went into monasteries, they lived a life of isolation for the love of God, because they wanted to get closer to God. And this is how Allah speaks about them in the Quran. Allah is very reasonable, not unjust, not as unreasonable as we are, of course. Very reasonable. Now, it says, وَرَحْبَانِيَّةً talks about Isa, alayhi salam. ثُمَّ قَفَّيْنَا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ بِرُسُلِنَا وَقَفَّيْنَا بِإِسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ We sent after all those prophets, we sent Isa ibn Maryam وَجْعَلْنَا فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُ رَأَفَةً وَرَحْمَةً And in the heart of those who followed him, we put mercy and compassion. Until the day of judgment. And I tell you, we are followers of Isa as well. So, inshallah, that, that mercy and compassion is in our hearts as well. It should be. Because we are followers of Isa as well, ultimately. Whatever revealed to our Prophet, to Prophets before us, we believe in them. And especially those who really, really claim they are Christians, there should be compassion. And if you want to if you want to test a true Christian, then you see if they have compassion and mercy. Because Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُهُ رَعْفَةً وَرَحْمَةً We have put compassion and mercy in the hearts of those who followed them, followed him. Then he says, وَرَحْبَانِيَّةً Because that was a question at the time of the Prophet. Should we go and live like these Christian monks? They leave the world, they abandon everything. That there are some moving verses in the Quran that sometimes encourages you to do that. It is said that when this verse in Surah Hadid was revealed, and probably this is, this is the connection. أَلَمْ يَأْنَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَأَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لَذَكْرَ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Isn't it the time for Mu'mineen that their heart becomes humble for Allah? And do not be like those who we gave them book before. فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts were, went cruel and hard. Some of the believers, upon hearing this, they were moved. They abandoned their families, their houses. They went into caves, in mountains, and they used to live there. And then, of course, Prophet rebuked them, that this is not the meaning you understood. However, this is... This verse at the end of Surah Al-Hadid is actually addressing this question. So, how should we seek the pleasure of God? How should we seek to satisfy Him? How should we go closer to Him? Now, when Allah talks about Christians, then comes this question about Christian monks, which was a question at the time. وَرَحْبَانِيَّةً Now, you ask about monasticism. You talk, ask about Rahbaniya, abandoning the world. Ibtata'uha, they invented it. Ma katabnaha alayhim. We didn't write it for them. 
We didn't say that for seeking my pleasure you have to do that. We didn't do that. But they did it. We hadn't commanded them as such. What we had commanded them was Seek the pleasure of God. This is what we, this is what we said. But, you know, okay, how should we do it? Then we start to, ex to interpret, we start to make our own ways, our own understanding of it. And then they did invent this because they said it's good. If we want to seek the pleasure of God, we abandon everything, we dedicate ourselves to God, we do not marry, we do not do business, we do not live like other people, we just isolate ourselves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for God. But this was not the meaning of what I said. I said, seek my pleasure. They couldn't observe it correctly. They thought that by abandoning the world, things would go better. The human nature would be tamed. It doesn't. It doesn't. You have to tame yourself in the heat of the business. You have to tame your soul in the heat of the battle. This is, this is how you have to tame yourself. Not leaving everything saying, because I don't want to be tempted. That's how you... So, فَمَا رَعَوْهَا حَقَّ رَعَيَتَهَا However, what should God do with them? What should God do with them? I mean, if you were God, how would have you judged them? They left everything for the sake of God. He says, فَآتَيْنَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَنْهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ If they are faithful, I give them their reward. Because they came with good intention. They did it with good intention. But... You Muslims, I'm telling you, beware. This is not I want. I want you to, be, to tame your souls in the heat of the day-to-day -day life. To control yourself when you have power. To control yourself when you have wealth. To control yourself in a battle. To control yourself when you are interacting with others. This is what I want. So, when we... When we live ordinary life, when we are not monks, then of course, wealth is better than poverty. Comfort is better than discomfort. Of course it is. However, it doesn't somehow go the way we want all the time. So we have to be patient. But we ask, this is good. We ask everything good from Allah. As Imam, I, I mentioned, Imam said, I want khair from you. Whatever I know, whatever I do not know. Whatever I realize to be khair, whatever I do not realize to be I want all of them from you. And this is all the elaboration. So, Allahumma a'tana sa'ata farrazq. I want abundance of sustenance. Wal amna wa fil watan. I want security in my homeland. Not that I become a refugee here and there because I don't have security in my homeland. Give me security where I am. Not that I have to escape and run away. How important is this? And how delicate Imam thinks about all these issues. And how he thinks that all these are bounties of Allah. Our favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allahumma a'tina sa'ata fil rizq wal amna fil watan wa qurrata al ayn fil ahli wal mali wal walad. Qurrata al ayn means something which makes us happy. I want happiness when I look at my children, when I look at my properties, when I look at my family. Not sadness, not sorrow, not to be always distraught about them. Make me happy about them. You have given me lots of things. I want this to be continued. I don't want you to withdraw anything that you have given me. This is, this is a very beautiful dua actually from the Prophet peace be on him. On the night of 15th of Sha'ban, the Prophet used to say this dua. Allahumma la taslubni salaha ma'an amta bihi alayya abadan. God, whatever you have given me, whatever favor you have given me, please do not withdraw it. Isn't it? The eyes, the ears, 
the heart, the mind, then the children, family, wealth, whatever Allah has given us. Do not, and most importantly, faith. Allah has given us faith. Do not withdraw it from us. Because sometimes we do certain things that it would remove the ni'mah, remove the bounties. I want muqam fi ni'amak andi to stay in whatever you have given me, not to leave it. I think I mentioned about the, the way prophets politely spoke to Allah. I don't know whether I did mention it here or somewhere else. I sometimes forget where I have said what. So anyhow, the prophets said, Allah Mutawatawai has at the end of chapter 5 uh, of chapter 5 Surah Ma'idah, I think he has a very long discussion about the manners in which the Imams requested things from Allah Subhanahu and their politeness. One example he gives, which is very beautiful, is the example of the, I think I mentioned this here, the son of Nuh. When Allah had promised him that he would save his family and he thought that he's, he's from his Ahlul Bayt. But look how he puts it. He, وَقَالَ نُوهُ After he was drawn, and Nuh was, of course, struck with sorrow and sadness and confused. Why did it happen? Allah had promised me. But look how he speaks. And just look how we sometimes speak to God in our heart when we are in distress. وَقَالَ نُوحٌ رَبِّ إِنَّ إِبْنِي مِنْ أَحْلِي My son is a member of my Ahlul Bayt, of course. وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقِّ Your promise is true, but I'm not complaining what, for what happened. وَأَنْتَ أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكَمِ You rule, I follow. But just, this is the way he puts it. Or, at the end of Surah An'am, when Isa السلام, wants to intercede for Christians, look how he does. So beautiful. It's mesmerizing for these Christians who believe in Trinity. He wants to intercede on the Day of Judgment. At the end of Surah of course, when I say Christians, I mean really the Christians who really believe in Jesus Christ, not those who take Christmas as a, as a sort of boozing party or something like that. Now, uh, at the end of Surah Ma'adah, Allah says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا إِسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ When the Christian nation are gathered and Isa is brought to witness, the prophets are brought there to witness. Is Did you tell these people to take you and your mother as gods? Some Christians believe that, that Mary was God as well, and some believe that only Jesus and Jesus is part of God, or different. Did you tell them? You are Exalted. Had I said it, you'd, you would have known it, of course. I never have said such a thing. Now, now he wants to intercede. That, okay, these generations came, confusion came. The generations that came afterwards, they didn't know what happened. Those who created this idea of Trinity, of course, you have to punish them. But what about those who are now born Christian, they don't know anything? They want to be faithful, they love me. So, how he wants to intercede for them? He says, in to adhibhum fa'innahum ibaduk. If you want to punish them, they are your creatures. Who can stop you? Who can question you about it? In to adhibhum fa'innahum ibaduk. Wa in taqfir lahum fa'innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim. But if you forgive them, of course you are powerful and wise. This is how he is interceding for them. See the politeness? 
Now, politeness in asking, I, I mentioned all that to come to this idea of wal muqam fi na'amaka andi. I want continuously to be in your na'amah. There's one da'a from Amir al-Mu'in Nahjul Balaqa that he used to recite frequently in the mornings. It's a very beautiful piece of da'a that he says, I praise Allah that I wake up and I still have my intellect and I still am holding together and I, I still have my faith and lots of these things. And then at the end he, he wants to say, God, do not make me blind, do not make me deaf, do not make me paralyzed and like these things. But look how politely he says it. This is beautiful. He says, Allah maj'al nafsi awwala ni'matan. Make my soul the first ni'mah you withdraw from me, my life. What does that mean? What does that mean? Make my life the first ni'mah you withdraw from me. Isn't it? He doesn't say, God, don't take me, don't make me deaf, blind or whatever. But because he has the right to withdraw whatever he has given. And say, okay, you have the right to withdraw whatever you want. But please, if you want to withdraw, take my life first. This is al mughan fi na'amaka indi. I want continuity to be your, in your favors. Was fil jas. I want health in my body. Wal quwwata fil batan. I want the strength in my limbs. Was salamata fil deen. And I want safeguard in my faith. Now this is, this is very important, isn't it? After all those things, safeguard in my faith. Salam of din I have a wholesome faith. A faith which is not based on illusions, on superstitions. And in fact, when he continues, he says, Allahumma a'tani basiratan fi dinik. Give me insights in faith, in religion. That my faith, as I said, is not based on superstition, is not based on confusion, is not based on misunderstanding, is based on pure insights and wisdom and understanding. Allahumma a'tani basiratan fi dinik. And this is what, of course, majority of the faithful don't have, isn't it? We have faith, but we don't have basira in faith. And that's why we fight each other, we kill each other, just look how funny this has become. Muslims put suicide vests on themselves and go, they blow themselves up in a mosque to kill other Muslims. How we are in need of Basira in faith. This is very funny. Okay, you can excuse them if they do it with, with those who, with the occupiers or with others. You say, okay, they are freedom fighters, but they go and kill other Muslims with those, and they, they think that by doing that they go to paradise. I don't know what God does to them, I, we don't want to judge them. These young people who are just taken for these suicidal acts, I don't know what God does with them. But they go and blow themselves in, among Muslims in mosques, and they think that they go to paradise for it. This is why we need Basira. And this is not, of course, the only case. You know, in Karbala, when Umar, when Umar ibn Sa'd commanded his army to charge, what he said, stupidity has no end, has no ultimate place, stupidity in, in faith. He said, Ya Jundallah, Erkabi, Oh, you army of God, charge and your good, the good news for paradise for you. Go and kill Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet, and you go to paradise. Now, this is, of course, a very extreme degree of stupidity in faith. However, we have certain degrees of that as well in many, many occasions. Not as that extreme, and we have to have ask for that insight. And that insight comes with knowledge. We have to seek knowledge of our faith, the right knowledge, 
the previous ummah, they did go astray because they didn't have enough knowledge. Like that Rahwaniya, monasticism, they, they invented. They did it with good intention. We do things with good, good intention, but we don't have that basira. Wafahman fi hukmak. I want understanding in your judgment. When you judge something, when you rule something, whether in creation or in your book, or in fact, when you rule and judge something and say you have to follow it, I want a real awareness and understanding about it. I don't want to do it blindfoldedly. That's another thing. Fiqh, of course, nowadays fiqh has another meaning. Fiqh is just uh, the, uh, the, the whole body of rulings that we have to, to practice in Islam. But literally, which is used here, literally fiqh means deep understanding. I want deep understanding of your knowledge. What is his knowledge? Of course, whatever knowledge we have, we get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that knowledge is pervasive in the whole creation. I want deep understanding of that. And that we talked about previously. A double share of your mercy, I want. What is that double share? Dunya and Akhara. Now this double share has a beautiful story as well. You know, in Surah, uh, in Surah Qasas, Allah talks about those Christians and Jews who convert to Islam. الذين آتيناهم الكتاب من قبله هم به مؤمنون. To those whom we give book, we gave book before, they believe in this book as well. Those who had insight, of course, not those who take who took religion as sects and parties and like that, as أحزاب as the Quran mentions them about them. هم به مؤمنون. وإذا يطلع عليهم. And when this book is recited to them. قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِهِ They say we convert from our previous way, we convert to this new faith. قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِهِ إِنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّنَا This is the truth from our Lord. إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مُسْلَمِينَ In our own religion we were Muslims as well. This is not something new. But this is a fresh expression of what we believed before. This is a new prophet for that faith. So they believe in it. Then Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْتَوْنَ أَجْرَهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ بِمَا صَبَرُوا Because of their perseverance and patience, they will receive double rewards. One, because they were Jews or Christians and practiced that. Another one, because they have become Muslims. They have double rewards. They say about this, one interpretation of this Kiflain al Rahman is that some Muslims came to the Prophet and they complained. They say, why if Jews and Christians convert to Islam, they have two rewards, but we have one reward. Why? We are born. Now, at that time, people converted from shirk to Islam. Well, they shouldn't be given any reward for their shirks, should they? But Christians and Jews, they should have been given, of course, for the reward for their faith. Now, just think about it today. We are born Muslims. And we are raised as Muslims. Then suddenly someone comes from Christian background, from other backgrounds, from Jewish background, and they convert to Islam. And Allah says, you as Muslims who have practiced Islam all your life, you will have one reward, they will have two rewards. But the Muslims start to complain, isn't it? Why? Why they should get two rewards? Well, there may be good reason for it, because they have actually made an effort to change. However, they say that when Muslims complained about that, then the verse at the end of Surah Al-Hadid was revealed. That's, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah wa aminu bi rasulih If you also have real faith in the Prophet and taqwa in Allah, you will have double reward as well. This is one explanation of it. But the better explanation of it is Give us good in this world, give us good in that world. So this is And I want the piety 
which is so deep, which is so strong, that keeps me away from any disobedience. All types of disobedience, it keeps me away from it. I want that piety, that type of piety. Very good. And then he says, we have come to the end of our time, just very quickly, there's something that we, we should always recite. Uh, myself, I'm talking about myself, sorry. Allahumma inni a'udhu baka min al-kasal al-fashal. I seek refuge in you from laziness. That I do not start acting properly. Laziness. Well, fashal. Fashal is failure all the time to do things. To be so slow in doing things. Well, ham. Ham is a sort of feeling that you always <coughs> feel sorry about things which happen around you. I don't want this attitude. I want a positive attitude. Not a, ham is a negative attitude. I want a positive attitude. And also I seek refuge from al job cowardice. wal bohl stinginess. wal ghafla negligence. And I mean, every one of these things that Imam is seeking refuge from it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, we can talk about it immensely. Negligence, wal qaswa cruelty of the heart. When the heart goes cruel and hard, I seek refuge. Well, maskana and humility and misery. And well, faqra and poverty and indigence, I seek refuge from all these to you. And we seek refuge from our own nafs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naudu billah min shurura anfusana. ومن سيئات أعمالنا وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين.